What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be working on the Red Crew Cab who has been named for us by my brother, Prospector Bob. Being a Prospector trim line, we call it Prospector Bob, so that might catch on, we'll see. But what we're gonna do is address the heater controls today. I mentioned in a previous video that I didn't have the correct check valve for the brake booster for the vacuum lines. I've got everything I need. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna try. After we get that all installed, I'm gonna show you guys what each of the air control buttons should do and where you should feel air coming from. I think there's some big misconceptions about that. So I'm gonna clear that up for you guys after we get all this stuff installed. So let's go take a look at the truck and I'll show you what we've got. Now I've popped the hood. Before we look under the hood, I need to uh, ask you guys, I am looking for a set of these seats with the center console in red. Now these are 94 to 97 seats. I would be fine with the 98 to 02 seats where the seat belt comes out here, uh, but I figure people will want more money for those, but I need these in red. These ones are in excellent condition, except for this tear in the seat of the center console. But you'll see in the garage, I picked up another center console. so. Uh, if anyone had some red ones that they were wanting to trade for these, I would trade straight across or uh, let me know what you can do. I don't really want to deal with shipping, so anything in Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, um, Vegas that's within driving distance for me that we could work something out, I would love to do that. These are in great shape, but I want to maintain the red interior of this truck. So just want to throw that out there in case anyone has any leads on that. Let me know. All right, so I showed you guys in a different video that this check valve did not have the nipple for the heater controls, which would uh, have a vacuum line, a small vacuum line coming off, going along the firewall, and then going into the firewall right here, which that's what this is, so it's unplugged. So because of that, the controls for the vents in the cab don't work appropriately. Right now I've got to give a huge shout out to Trevor Lee. He's been a follower of the channel since the beginning. He's in Utah a couple hours north of me. Uh, he's one of the guys who anytime I ask or need something, he's, he DMs me on Facebook as quick as he can. He's got solutions for me. He sent me a check valve and it was here the next day after that video. But that's when I ran into another issue. So let's, let me grab that check valve and I'll show you. So here's the check valve, the, the correct one. Um, it, it, this has the line for the vacuum for the air control, so it's perfect. So I actually went to put this in the other day and so I pulled this vacuum line off right there. And then I pulled the check valve out and it just pulls out like that. And I noticed that we have another issue. You can see the size here is smaller than here. So this is a different vacuum booster, probably from the 97 that uh, had a smaller inlet there for the uh, check valve. So then I talked to Trevor and he pulled this check valve off a donor truck. So he was gracious enough to actually pull the whole vacuum pump off of that truck. Um, but we're going to try something before we swap the vacuum pump. So here it is. And you can see this one fits that check valve. So I think what I'm going to do is pull this grommet out, see, measure the size of that hole, and then see if we can carefully ream out this hole to be the appropriate size so that we don't have to change the whole vacuum booster. So that might be, it's going to be cramped with the brake master cylinder here, but we're going to try it. I think it'll save us time and energy if it works. So let's pull these grommets out and see if we can get that reamed out as far as we need to. Okay, there's the grommet. So we need the hole to be that size. All right, so I just pulled the two nuts off the studs for the brake master so I could slide that out of the way. Now we have perfect access 
So we need to go to a one inch hole. Okay, let's put the grommet in. Boom. Now we can connect this vacuum line here. And that's not a very tight connection. I might put a little bit of tape on there, but we're gonna test it like that for now. I'm hoping that fixes it because that's much easier than what I thought I was going to have to do with switching that booster in. So cross your fingers, let's start it up, take it for a little drive, and then I'll show you guys what each of the vent controls should do and where you should fill air. All right, so that didn't work. Uh, it's still not putting the air where it's supposed to be. So let me explain to you how I know that. Um, obviously when you push the windshield button, the air should come out of the windshield vents. When you push the heat button, the air should all come out of the foot vents. And it should be, as soon as the coolant's up to temp, it should be warm air. Um, the vent button should push air through all the dash vents. So uh, as far as temperature, as long as you have the temperature set to heat, any of these three, windshield, heat, or vent, will put out heat. Okay, so if you want heat to be blowing on your body or your face, put it on vent because it should come out of these ones uh, right here. If you want to defrost the windshield, push it on this one and it should send heat up through these vents and if you want heat at your feet uh, so that you can fill the lower portion of the cab with heat and then hopefully that heat rises up and heats up the cab then you push this one now these two uh, ac and max ac are going to be pushing pretty much primarily from the vents and with the air conditioner on so the reason i know this isn't working and it's working a little bit better than before i switched to the check valve before no air would come out of vents until it built up some vacuum pressure and then i could push vent and then heat and then it would come out of the vents which is not what it's supposed to do but it would bring some air out now as long as i have it on heat it comes out of the vents so the next step we're going to do, I'll show you guys how to do this. We're going to remove the glove box and I'm going to show you where the vacuum actuators are for all the uh, controls and see if maybe those are not hooked up correctly from when the previous owner did the crew cab swap. The nice thing is, is I have a control right there that I can look at on that one to see exactly how it's supposed to be because everything on that truck works perfectly as far as the heater and everything goes and really everything um, but i'll pull the glove box on that one and we'll compare the actuators on that truck 
to this truck and make sure all the lines match up perfectly. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll take it for another drive and see what happens. All right, so to remove the glove box, there's four Phillips head screws here. Okay, those are out now. Open the glove box. All right, underneath here we have both of our actuators for the air controls for all the vents. So what I'm gonna do real quick is go take the dash off of the OG crew cab, take some pictures of where all the vacuum lines go, make sure these ones are all in the correct spot, and then we will go from there. Also, I see often that people have their ABS and their brake lights stuck on their truck. Uh, that's usually because of the anti-lock brake system is not great on these. And the module that controls that is this right here, and it's garbage. So what I always recommend and what I see most people recommend, if you've got those lights on your truck and you want to turn them off, just unplug this module. It will have no negative side effects for anything else. Just unplug that plug. Um, and then those lights should go off. Just a little tip. So I will go check the other actuators in the OG crew cab and check back in with you guys and let you know how it's supposed to be hooked up if this one isn't correct, so stand by. All right guys, I just wanna bring you in here and take a minute to uh, appreciate the OG crew cab. I don't show it much on the channel right now because I'm not doing anything to it, but look how clean this thing is and how clean all that is I did a good job on this swap I must say this one I built myself the prospector Bob someone else built and I bought it so all right enough of that enough of giving myself a pat on the back all right so I compared the vacuum lines of the OG crew cab to prospector Bob behind the uh, glove box and everything and it it all looks like it's where it should be nothing looks out of place but I did come up uh, and check under the hood a little bit and I noticed something that this may be the problem. So you can see that uh, where the vacuum lines go in, the one coming from the brake booster goes into this right nipple and the one coming from the heater core line goes into the left one. And when I came over to this truck and checked that, they were actually the opposite so i switched them now this is correct and that made sense because remember when i put this on it was very loose uh, now it fits nice and snug um, because it's correct so i'm going to take that for a short little drive around the block and see if that changes anything so i'll be right back all right guys i took it for another little drive and it was a little different, like the buttons change where the air comes from, but it's not where it should be. Uh, so it has, it's got me confused. We have vacuum from the brake booster. The lines are all good. That leaves me with one thing. Um, it makes me wonder if uh, this unit is actually bad. And I've seen people um, have that issue where this goes bad. So... I think what I'm going to do is reach out to the Utah First Gen Group on Facebook and see if anyone's got one local. May take a couple days, but uh, we'll see. I think that's the next step is to switch that out and see if that fixes it. So I'll catch back up with you guys when I have that part. Should be a couple days. We'll see. Hopefully that's the case. All right, guys, a couple days later here, and I have a new heater control unit. So... Thanks to Kate and James, uh, he hooked me up on this. He had an extra one here in Utah. Um, so thank you so much. This is gonna be a lifesaver. Hopefully this works. Uh, so I've got the dash bezel pulled off. If you guys don't know how to do that, I've got a video on uh, when I redid the gauge cluster in here. I'll link that above right now. Um, so you can see how to pull that bezel off. But all we're gonna do is take these couple screws out um, we have to get the heater selection cable off of there, um, and then we should just be able to swap them out real easy. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, we got the old one out. I have to say in terms of getting, accessing and removing something on a first gen, 
this one's got to rank up in the top three or four. That was a horrible experience. So I'm not even going to walk you through how I did it because I don't even know how I did it. So you can see I had to remove the stereo to get up in here. Um, but just tons of plugs, tons of cables, got the vacuum cables. So just lots of stuff you've got to disconnect carefully without breaking it. So I'm going to get the other one hooked back up and then we're going to give it a whirl and see if that was the issue that better be the issue after all that work i went through but we'll see who knows Got it all plugged back in. As you can see, it was easier to plug it back in. I think the key to actually taking it apart, this is, um, thank goodness, this is kind of an unmolested dash wiring harness. And there are a lot of factory zip ties holding things together, kind of holding wires back in there. And it wasn't until I cut all those zip ties that I was able to really pull it out and access it. So if, this, if you're working with a factory unmolested wiring harness, the best thing is to find all the zip ties and just snip them real quick. And that allows the wires to extend out and pull the, the unit out to access the back of it. So anyways, let's try it. It's all hooked up, I think. I'll double check it, but, uh, you know, it's not buttoned back up. But at least we can try it and see if that may have been the issue. So, all right, here we go. That's better than the other one. Let's do the defrost. There it goes. It's coming out of the defrost. Ooh, I'm liking this. The heat button, remember that should come out down here. And that's exactly what it's doing. Let's go vent again. There it goes. Ha <laughs> ha, yes! Kayton, you're the man for hooking me up with this, but that was the issue, which I wouldn't have suspected that to be the issue, but uh, it's working perfectly now out of everything it should. So remember, the windshield button does defrost up here only. The heat button does the floor vents. The vent button does the vent buttons. As long as you've got the slider over to the heat, you can use heat on any of those three. So if you want heat from the vents, just push vent. Uh, and then AC is more self-explanatory, but awesome. Yes, one more step on the red crew cab. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That was kind of a textbook video of just going through diagnosing and uh, kind of a trial and error process for diagnostics. Um, I'm not a mechanic, you guys know that, and trial and error sometimes is the best way for me to figure some of these things out. So uh, if you don't know what you're doing or, or you don't feel like you're well versed in this, take a step back, think about what's involved in the situation and go through and troubleshoot each one. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Again, if you're gonna take this heater unit out, uh, clip those factory zip ties, that made it a whole lot easier. Um, so I'm going to button this all back together and this is one step closer to being able to drive this truck more. I didn't drive it a lot right now in the winter because I couldn't consistently get the heat to work, but now we've got it. So whew, I'm excited. Well, like this video if you haven't yet. That was a lot of work. Like it. That'll really help me out and we'll see you guys in the next video.